Hey, hello everyone. Good morning. We're live. I did the thing where I had six minutes and I went downstairs to boil some water and I'm saying bye to, to my wife and kids and I go, oh no, I'm on live. So I'm just uh, getting settled. I see that there are folks in the chat. Good morning, everyone. Um, oh, hello. I'm just going to take a minute to, to read through the chat. Thank you for joining. Uh, hello, Adrian. Awesome. Thank you for joining. Hello, Douglas from Minneapolis. Your letter this week is so on. Everyone should read it four times this week. It's perfect. I'm a believer. What did I write? We'll, we'll pull up the letter. Um, Sundays with Rona, no better place to be. Thank you, Alan Shear from the UK. Hello, da Dammer Cayman. Hello. Um, good to see all these friendly faces. Hello, Nikolai from Oakland, California. And Guy Smalley, hello. Yeah, it's hot and humid from Columbus, Ohio. It's hot and humid here, too. Um, yeah, it's nice. It's a early here, so it's still not crazy. This is the roof, and so it does get really hot in here very quickly. Uh, hello, Manish. Very good to see you, Douglas. By the way, anyone with an extra accordion? I need one for a couple of months or know someone who has. Yeah, Douglas, if, um, I had this idea about, um, I had this idea about how do we get people playing the accordion. When I lived in Toronto, I used to play accordion in public. And if anyone said they were interested, I always had one or two extra accordions that I would lend to people. And I thought, is there a way of doing it globally? Um, of just letting people have an accordion for a month um, just to try it out. And then they would ship it to the next person. Um, I, th I think it's still a great idea. But maybe, um, maybe if I do accordion full time one day. Um, that'll be a thing to have an accordion network of people that want to pick up the accordion, but maybe are in an area where they don't have the financial means to buy one or rent one for a month. So just we ship accordions around the world uh, and, and it would be sponsored by Accordion Love. I think that would be a cool, a cool thing. Um, yeah, Dwayne, the letter. Good morning from San, from San Diego. Hello, Ernie. Good to see you. Um, good to hear you. Sorry, I'm just scrolling down the email he sent on Friday. I'll read the email. I'm not sure what, what I wrote there, but I'm happy. Oh, hello, Akshay from uh, from Pune, Pune, from Pune, India, San Diego, where I grew up. Hello, hello, Janice from White Rock. Um, White Rock, yeah, I think Janice uh, answered that in British Columbia. Hello, Wendy, good to see you. I'm a beginner, but with Ronan song forms, chords, etc., I figured out. Oh, Susanna, good job, good job. Um, I don't know any Jimmy Buffett tunes, I'm sorry. Oh, good, yeah, so... I sent out an email about learning. Uh, by the way, if you're not on my email list, send me an email. I'll, I'll write my email at the end of the live chat, ronan at accordionlove.com. Every week I send out an email with some new content, usually up on accordionlove.com or a preview uh, on YouTube. Uh, and I send out a link to the live stream. But just to summarize quickly uh, what Friday's email was about, there's a song called Forever Young by Alphaville. Uh, forever young, I want to be forever young. Um, and and just the song has this awesome solo. And how we figure out the song is by knowing the chords of the song and the s solo note by note is the triad of those chords of the solo. Uh, anyways, that video will go live. I think I'll put it on YouTube as well. But um, but yeah, it's a really fun song to work through because the keyboardist or the horn player chose the triads of the chords. The C major is the C major triad. Next chord is G. He chose a the G triad and knowing that lets us memorize the uh, song easier lets us recall it a bit easier just like I did now just because it's so tightly built into the chords of the song I'm just going to take one more minute to read through the chat make sure that the audio and video are working and then we'll get on to more questions and and more songs good uh, awesome yeah Wendy I'm so happy to hear that 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 lessons are working. Um, someone else, I, I think. Um, I I, I want to keep people anonymous, and I also um, want to, and I also want to recognize people who've done nice things. So another student sent an email this week saying, "Hey, I've been practicing things, and it's working out." Um, he he's on this live chat. 
uh, if, if you know who you are, let me know if it's okay to say your name. But yeah, Wendy, thank you for sharing that. I always love hearing, and I think other students also love hearing stories of, of, of where you struggle as well as where you're succeeding. Um, awesome. Uh, learning the Quran from India. Awesome. Oh, Mahesh. Sorry, I called you Mahesh. Hello. Hello, Anne. Great. Thank you, Ace. Yakshamash. Hello, Akmakshiv. You were here a few weeks ago, too. Uh, hello, Monica. My mom is here. Uh, bonjour. Uh, good afternoon. Good. We're getting to Michael. Shalom. Hello. Michael usually requests old Hebrew songs, which I love. Greetings, Don. Hello from France. Hello, Mia. So glad to be here and can't wait to hear you play. Thank you. Shalom. Um, Tex. Adrian. Good. I'm just looking for questions and requests. Newport Beach, California. Beautiful. Hello, MS711. Um, Timothy. Hello from Pennsylvania. It's hot and steamy here too. And good. Hi. Poland, Tominic, and hello, Uria. Good to see everyone. Good. So I have a few items. Let's start off with um, with a really, uh, with a basic question. So Guy Smalley, you're on the chat. Uh, you asked for a song request, but before that, you just had a question about my microphone setup. Um, so amplifying my accordion, it's a big issue. I've tried to do videos about it for a while. Um, what I've come on, what I've, the setup that I'm using now are two uh, matched microphones. Matched being they have the same frequency response, they're by the same person. They pick up things very similarly. Uh, and so I have one for the left hand of the accordion and one for the right hand. It's the Rode M5, I believe. I, I don't want to touch them because it'll feedback, but, um, the Rode M5 is going into a Zoom H4N Pro recorder. Um, and the reason I use this recorder is it has two, what's it stuck on? It has two XLR inputs. So the mics are coming in to those two channels. And then this feed is connected via USB to my, to my computer so I can record and do those things. Um, I think it's a serious setup. It's, it's, you know, the microphones together about 150 Canadian dollars and the recorder is I'm, I'm calling it expensive as well I think it's two or 250 Canadian dollars um, to amplify the accordion there are other solutions when I played in a band we had one condenser microphone so it was a microphone that we would place here and it would pick up a 180 pattern so that's another nice solution to pick up the accordion you have one microphone that has a wide uh, condenser kind of thing and that's nice because it picks up both sounds the issue with the accordion is right hand is quite easy to pick up because it doesn't move the sound always comes from here the left hand I've had microphones pick it up here which is nice but also if I'm stretched all the way here the sound moves around um, so yeah so I like this setup the two microphones setup um, I also like depending on what you want to do um, to have a pickup on the accordion. That way you have a cable, but that way you can move around. Um, the other thing, when Martin was here a few weeks ago, he, I asked him about how to pick up, uh, how to amplify an accordion, and he said he had the best solution, which was uh, you have a little slide here and a slide here, and a microphone comes out over here, almost like a little lav mic, uh, lavalier mic, but it just amplifies the right side of the accordion, and then the left side, comes out here and it amplifies the left side of the accordion. So you have the portability of uh, of an onboard mic um, while having the, the the amplification, the beauty of these two microphones, but they're on the accordion. Uh, and it didn't sound like it was an overly expensive solution, but in general, I believe that there's the amplification part, which is how do you mic it? And then where does that feed into? And that's the idea of um, I have one here. This is a little uh, audio interface. Um, this is an M audio with one XLR input. Um, and then this has the USB out so that you can put it into some sort of digital workstation or some sort of computer device. Um, otherwise, a phone works too. Um, put it close to the accordion, um, right? That's That's kind of one of the main things. So that's just Guy's question about how do I amplify my accordion? I use the two Rode M5s, N5s into a Zoom H4N Pro. 
yeah, both for live streaming and for my other recordings. Good. Um, and and I, I, I'm barely scratching the surface on audio. Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, th this is essentially just from watching some YouTube videos. I, I know people study this stuff, audio engineers, and, um, and they have much better ideas. Uh, by the way, Douglas asked if anyone has an extra accordion. Douglas, if you can let people know where you are, maybe someone can, can, um, can drop off an accordion for a month for Douglas. Um, uh, hello, my aunt is here. Hi, Dee Dee. Uh, where does the sound come out of on the accordion? If you have an accordion, play it. Uh, at the, I record a few albums with my band, and the recording engineer, you know, he was moving his head around. He goes, can you play a bit? Right hand? It's like, oh, sound comes out of here if you're playing low, here if you're playing high. So he sometimes had two microphones picking up the right hand, right? And then the left hand, where does it come out of? I'm assuming it's coming out of here where the sound holes are. Um, but I don't mind. My issue was when the recording engineer for an album put the microphone here. He said, make sure you don't go out too much because you'd bump into the microphone. But if you're playing and you're recording and you're really into it, my hand stretches all the way out here and I wound up uh, bumping the microphone. So right now where I have this microphone isn't bad for my ear. So sometimes it's okay to pick it up like that, even though the sound is coming out that way. Um, that's the answer on accordion, recording accordion sound. Um, good. Uh, hello, Ronan. Hello, Pafila Didi. Hello from Kishinev. Awesome. <laughs> Many thanks, Ronan. Awesome. I hope that helps. So, uh, Guy had a song request for the song Harvest Moon by Neil Young. It's a song I know in my head, but I haven't tried and I wanted to keep it new. So I thought, let, let's do, uh, let's learn the song together. I'll, I'll talk through how I play the song. Uh, I'll share my screen just to show you how I go about it. We're going to do the song Harvest Moon Chords. This is how I encourage you to learn songs. Um, come a little bit closer, hear what I have to say. So the song's in D major. All these variations on D, I don't care about. I don't know what a D, I know what a D major 7 is. Right? Ba, 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 da. E, mi e mi minor 7. I, again, I don't care about the 7. Do I know an E minor? Yes. D major is G because I still... Na, na, na. Yeah, I think I understand the song. So again, what I'm going to do is, do I know E minor? Yes. D major. Ba, 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 da. Just like children sleeping, we could dream this night away. D major to E minor. I, I know it on the right and left hand. And then... Da, 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 ba, ba, G major to the D chorus. Because I'm still in love with you, I want to see you dance again. I think it goes down to the G major. This, I think, is incorrect. On this harvest moon. Good. So that's, that's the kind of learning that that I'm going to do because I know the song. I'm going to try and play it. It's in D major to E minor. Knowing song forms. Um, was it Don you were saying before about learning song forms? I know that the song's in D major. The song's going to go plus one. This is the minor two, the E minor to D major, E minor to D major. It goes up to the G and then the A fairly i'm going to play around with those keys right so let's let's try and play the song this is harvest moon by neil young done the first time you'll see me stumble around a bit with a melody and as i play it two or three times i think the song will start coming through um yeah let, let's we'll do it live do, do, da, da, da.
What a beautiful song. Uh, Neil Young, Harvest Moon. Uh, beautiful album, beautiful song. So, uh, so, some cool things there, right? There's a, there's a guitar on the song, and there's that beautiful ba 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 ba, which is the E minor tr um, arpeggio. <laughs> Right, so all those, all that practice of trides and arpeggios really paid off. In the sheet music, that um, if we go back to the sheet music really quickly, there was that D D six D major seven. What that was, again, I I don't pay attention to it because it's too much. I don't know where to put the six. I don't know where to put the seven. So I start off with the D major, and I know there's that. Um, on the guitar, ba, 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 which is what it means is that the D and the F sharp stay from the D major, and we just move this last one. If this is the five, five, six, seven, seven, five, six, seven, seven. But again, not to memorize the math, what it's doing is we're completing the chord, a multi-fingered melody. And doesn't that sound bigger and brighter than just the... Let's complete it. Let's complete it more. Just beautiful. Um, if I was a singer, I would I would sing the song because it's beautiful. Uh, I see a few more questions. Just um, I removed a comment from the chat. Just keep it keep it friendly. Use your use your logic. I love jokes, but let's keep it uh, let's keep it nice. Um, do you think it the La Valse de Monstre is a good music to learn for a beginner? There are some parts with different rhythm speeds for right and left hand, so it's a good exercise. Mia, let's, um, let's, thank you, Dammer hey um, uh, the song Vance de Monstre, um, it, it depends where you are, I'd like to see you and hear you play other songs before, my recommendation for, um, my recommendation for first songs are not waltzes, uh, do a march or a polka or a children's song, the reason being, I'll just do 30 seconds about this. I'd rather you play something like this. Um, uh, I know it's simple, but the right hand and the left hand are doing the same thing. As opposed to a waltz, where the right hand is oftentimes doing more, th hitting more notes than the left hand is doing, right? So. There are all these little hurdles that you have to surpass with a waltz that don't exist in straightforward songs like children's songs, often uh, marches and polkas. So live and polka, a good beginner song. Bella Chow, a good beginner song. Because we have... Um, It's easier, I'd like to see you do those songs first before doing Vals de Monstre. If you have a few of those songs, then Vals de Monstre um, is beautiful. The only difficult thing about Vals de Monstre is it doesn't, is it the chromatic part. It goes like this. It's, a, it's beautiful. If you know Vals de Monstre in your head, try and play it but once you start struggling with it maybe have another song you can switch to um the way that i would sorry another 30 seconds on vals de monstre what i would encourage you to do is if you're playing it in g minor let's say or d minor i'm not sure what it is on the site play the chords of the song um let me show you what i mean by that this is how i would practice vals de monstre um it's gonna be under french it's gonna be under vals do I have Vals de Monstre here? Oh no, I don't have Vals de Monstre. How I would play it? I thought I did. I did a lesson on transposing Vals de Monstre. Monstrous. 
us the monster. Sorry, this is accordionlove.com. I don't have us the monster here. How I would, sorry about that. How I would study us the monster, if it's G minor, D minor, and C minor, I would make sure you know your G minor. Ba, ba. So I'm hitting G minor to D minor, connect it to C minor to G minor. Same thing with the left hand. G minor. Make sure you can switch to D minor. Make sure you can switch to C minor. Make sure you can switch to G minor. Thank you, Guy. That's very generous. And slowly build up the things. So meaning do the same thing now with both hands. Fa, fa, fa. G minor, D minor. Good to see you, Paul. Good to see you, Vlad. Only then will you start doing the actual melody. And even before then, I guess, Mia, it depends where you're struggling. But yeah, I, I, that's the foundation. Start slowly building up the song to... Before that, I would do G minor with my right hand, D minor with my left right hand. Start breaking it up. That's how I would approach Vars de Monstre. Good. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Already gained 51. Hello, Ronin. Hello. Uh, someone asked, yeah, I just called to say I love you. Beautiful. Uh, I played it this week on the piano. Uh, Stevie Wonder uh, just called to say I love you. It's a beautiful song. Um, good. Hello, Kim. Good to see you. Someone asked for um, Pure Imagination. It's it's a uh, it is a confusing song with the chords. Good. Um, I wish I could play on your level. I've been playing really one and a half months at the moment. Take your time. This is a new physical skill. I wanted to to share a little anecdote again. My anecdotes sometimes work, sometimes they don't. Um, I, it's a uh, my wife was frustrated this week because not this week this weekend we we had um we had lambs and we we enjoyed raising lambs and now we're um we have their hides right their 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 skin sorry this sounds weird but we're human it's fine um and so w w my wife is learning how to she's trying to make hides right just to to be able to work with furs um and uh and so she took a workshop on how to um, on how to work with animal hides. And so she got an Ulu knife. I think that's how it's called. And we're taking away the... So, sorry if anyone is, is sensitive to this. But as, essentially, she's learning a new physical skill, right? There's a lot that goes into preparing a hide to, to be able to, to have it, right? On a chair or as clothes. Um, and so it's a frustrating thing. The hide doesn't look like what the internet makes it look. Um, and her wrist was hurting from doing this motion of trying to to, to prepare the hide. I'm just going to say um, I had to uh, prepare a big log so that she could get rid of some of the membrane on the inside of, of the hide. Uh, and again, it's very physically intensive. And so she's frustrating because it's like, oh, did we ruin this hide? I don't know what it's supposed to, to smell like or to look like. What is this supposed to be like? And, and I guess my, my thing is, it's a new physical thing that that my wife is doing with the accordion. This is the relation. You're doing a brand new thing. So so Gleb, yeah, one and a half months at the moment. Fantastic. Learning the accordion, just like learning to prepare hides, you have to do it six, 10, 20 times before that physical motion becomes natural. Um, so I'm sure that three, four hides from now, my wife will understand that on this first hide, she didn't need to do these small motions. Maybe she needed to do this kind of motion. Maybe she needed to apply a bit less pressure or a more, bit more pressure. Same thing with the accordion. When we're pushing and it's really loud versus sometimes what's required in the accordion is just the slightest bit of wrist motion. And maybe that's the motion for doing the major. Right? For Vaz de Monstre. So uh, learning a new physical skill that's part physical and part creative um, 
takes takes a long time. So where you are one and a half months to where you are two years from now to where you are 10 years from now, um, slow and incremental improvement is, is what we're after with any kind of new skill. Um, good. So let's, uh, let's continue with a few more questions. There was, um, I just called to say, I love you. Yeah. Pure imagination. Let me pull up the chords for pure imagination. Uh, I'm confused on the chords. If you could, the mystifying pure imagination, it's not an easy song. Let's go to accordion love. I know the song is here. So let's do a search for pure imagination. Um, pure imagination. I'll show, I'll show you the chords again. This is accordion love. Um, Obviously, I want you to know the song. The song has interesting chords. So let's play through them. Come with me. Again, I start to sing before the first chord, which is the thing that you're not supposed to do. Let's just concentrate on those three chords because they repeat, right? F minor, B flat, E flat. F minor, B flat, E flat. F minor, B flat, E flat. I see a trend. So let's make sure we know those chords. Um, and right it sounds like it's incorrect there's something dissonant there right it should be there's my f minor on both hands here that it sounds like it's incorrect but let's keep going so f minor with this thing over it I want you to just do those things. So F minor, come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Maybe ignore the rhythm. You can look at the lesson for how to do that, but try and do that. Um, try and do the F minor in your right hand too to B flat to E flat. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. That's also practice for you for the next few days, which is switching from the F minor voicing to an easy B flat voicing to an easy E flat voicing. I have lessons about voicings. And that happens over and over again, right? So. Let's keep going because I think that should be fairly clear, right? In the end, it ends with do do da 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 da. G major. We're over here now. G major, right? It walked down from the E flat to the C minor. Fine. F minor, B flat. Instead of the E flat, we're going to the G. Explanation. <laughs> Do you know a G major? Yeah. Practice that jump from the B flat to the G major. The bridge is a walk down. It's interesting. A flat. It's a big jump, right? From the G to the A flat. G major. <laughs> If you wanna do magic lands, in in the video lesson, I again just practice it. But the idea here is we have a walk down A flat to G minor to F minor. Maybe that's what you practice. X, but just from G major to the A flat, just that jump. If you wanna do if that jump is too big, the A flat is also above the F here. Is that true? Or am I just lying? If you want to view, the A flat is above the E. Uh, sorry, I guess we're getting a bit uh, complicated, but essentially the left hand is A flat to G minor. Quick chord changes. F minor, B flat. Flat, same as we did before here. And now this is just a strange one. So you can do an A minor here, just the A key, no minor or major. 
Right? C major. To B flat. Let, let me see where, if you have questions about that, it, it's a confusing song. Um, take it bit by bit like I just did. Take one or two lines at, at a time. Practice those chord changes. And, and send me an email with where you're having trouble. If you want to send me a, a, a video, uh, I'm happy to help you that way too. Um, good. Let me keep going. Um, which read voicing button do you like the most? I love uh, Musette. It sits on Musette for 90% of the time. <laughs> In between that and master, I like the the, the big fluttery sounds. A uh, few close on, I almost missed this. Hello, your boy Stephen. Good morning. Good to see you this fine Sunday morning. Awesome, Paul. Hello, um, John Goodwin. I uh, just uh, when I Google chords, it's just for reference. I love accordion love because they're they're my chords, but otherwise. Uh, Whichever side is fast, I don't like sitting through ads. I'll sometimes, it's just like a recipe, right? I'll look at two or three sites if I'm not sure and kind of make my own. Same kind of thing with with, uh, with chords. If I was to Google pure imagination chords, sorry, I'm screen sharing here. Pure imagination chords, ultimate guitar always comes up first. And let's take a look. Yeah, D minor, G and C, that's the same kind of thing that we did. Um, and yeah, that same walk down F E minor D G C. Yeah. Yeah. This is fine. I would play this until I stumble on a chord and say, Hey, that doesn't sound right. Then I would go back and Google some other sites. Chordify. I haven't heard of, but if it works for you, great. Um, I usually don't go past the first three hits on, on Google. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's my quick answer on where do I find chords? Um, did you take a look at the colo I sent you some time ago? I'm sorry, Ace. It's it's. I have a, a folder of, of uh, song requests that I handle every week. I haven't gotten to that one yet. Um, I'd like to play Puruna Cabeza as well. I'd like to play I Just Called to Say I Love You. Um, I realize that, that we, we have some, some people that watch that are accordion students and some people that watch that just like to hear accordion music. So let's, let's switch to two or three songs. And then um, let's, um, oh, oh no, I took off the microphone, sorry. Give me one second. Oh no, sorry, it might be a bit loud for, for a minute. Sorry about all those pops. Let's play a few songs. Let's play Puruna Cabeza and Stevie Wonder's I Just Call to Say I Love You. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, I just called to say I love you. I tried to switch around uh, with Bruna Cabeza. Someone was asking which reads I like to play. I like Musette. I tried to switch around and, and it didn't quite fit. Um, and then with I just called to say I love you, I switched around the different rhythms, right? We started off with a nice alternate bass technique. <laughs> And then I like that I just call to say I love you. That's nice too. And then in the end we got to legato. I think they're all really nice. Um, yeah, someone asked, uh, what do I think of a Chinese made accordion? My first red 48 bass accordion was a Chinese made accordion. And it was one of the better accordions that I had. I loved the tone. It had three reeds, I think. Um, and I liked it. It was great. I used to carry my accordion on the back of my bicycle. And this red accordion had two falls off the bicycle. Um, I used to carry it on my back before I learned how to carry it on my front. And I remember I made it tr two times it fell. One time I went over a bridge coming home. I used to ride my bike downtown to play. And going over the bridge, my... Uh, uh, my bike rack it went over the bridge my little screws went and the accordion was in the case fell off the bridge 12 feet onto a creek and the accordion survived and then another time when I, I think I just strapped the accordion I made a turn onto Young Street and I went down the sidewalk and uh, and the accordion uh, uh, slid across Young Street between traffic. Uh, I know my mom's watching this and you know I, I'm a safe rider but the accordion wasn't strapped on very well and the keys fell off. Um, yeah but the accordion kept working so uh, I, I like Douglas's answer which was Douglas what did you write? You said it's all about the tone um, which, which, which I liked. Accordions are as good as the sound. I would try and see if you like the tone. I've had okay Chinese equipment but do like Italian also. Me too. I have uh, my, my Waltmeister accordion I bought new and it's falling apart. Um, I love the sound of it though. So I, there's tape on it and if, if I had the money I'd repair it. This accordion is from 1960s I believe. It has dents just from and some tape but it sounds beautiful. And again every accordion that I've had whether it's German or, or Italian or Chinese um, has fallen apart and has sounded beautiful. Um, the red accordion I took to the beach and so it had sand in the reeds. I don't recommend doing that. But but the accordion is an instrument. It's a tool. Uh, use it. Um, I'm just going to go through the chat a little bit. Uh, I don't know what a glissando is. John, I struggle with it too. There's the song uh, ba, 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 Funiculi Funicula and there's the I always try and do a glissando up and I always miss it. I don't know. My, my father-in-law, Ken plays uh, piano beautifully and he's the master of the glissando. Glissando is sliding up to a note. I could do a glissando like that. Like, but I can't do the or down. I, I, I don't know how to uh, develop accuracy. I don't have a good answer. Maybe YouTube does. Um, 
I don't use key signatures in my music. My musical notator um, asked me, do I want the key signatures? The key signatures being, do I want, you know, in sheet music, in the beginning, it says there are two flats in this song and it's in the key of D major, D and uh, B flat. Or I prefer to put the notation on the actual note. So as I'm reading it, I see C, D, E flat. I, I like that. Um, I also don't know how to figure out the key of the song usually, but I, I could ask my musical notator to start putting the key signature in, in the actual music. Uh, Michael, I don't know what an LMMH reads are. Uh, I don't know what's inside this accordion. Uh, listening live while doing my basement renovations. Awesome. Drywall mudding. I, I, I don't envy you, but I appreciate you. I, uh, I did the drywall mudding on our little cottage outside and you could see exactly where each piece of drywall connects to the other. Hello, Handy da Daddy 2020 from Thornhill. That's my cousin. Um, hello, Tamar. Uh, so awesome. Thanks very much. Good. I I'm assuming that's about the pure imagination. Great to see you again. Hello, Ford. You played for the Loons and Eagles in northern Minnesota last week. They loved it. Fantastic. I receive emails that you guys are going outside and playing weather in a park. Um, there's a beautiful comment about, uh, I'm not sure if it was you, Ford, about playing a German lullaby uh, out uh, in the, like in a forest, uh, in a park. And a German tourist ran up to, to this person, one of the, my students. They're like, oh my God, that's my favorite song. I grew up with it. My father played it for me. And so, yeah, music creates all these wonderful connections. Uh, if you can go out and play, even if it's just a little lullaby that you're learning. Yeah. Um, so, Kep, go for it. If there are good reviews, the best thing is if there's a return policy. 500 euros... I, I guess my one thing is after speaking to Martin, Martin will send an accordion to you that works, that he's tested, that's guaranteed to work. I think for 500 euros, that sounds like it's about 650, 700 Canadian dollars, um, including shipping. Um, yeah, give him a try too. Give him a call. Um, if you YouTube how to buy used accordion on my channel or just how to buy used accordion, you'll see me and Martin sitting down and his contact info is there, Tempo Trend Music. Uh, I wanna emphasize that I, I don't receive any money from referring people to Martin. Um, I just really like him and he's nearby. Um, yeah, just wanted to make that clear. Uh, can you play Karma Chameleon? I don't know how to play Karma Chameleon. I, I like the song, I don't know how to play it. Um, and yeah, you wanna start playing this instrument? Do it. Besame mucho. Let's do that too. I don't know it, but we'll play it. Besame mucho. Sorry, there's so many things that I want to get through in this one hour. Um, there's probably a better way to organize these live streams, but I wanted to talk about klezmer uh, form, but may maybe we'll get to that later. Uh, if you can afford it, go for it. I started with a secondhand accordion that had some keys out of tune. It didn't help at all. Yeah, that's no good. Um, and yes, Douglas, if you could see one with a audio or video recording, that would help a lot. How is Fortnite as a musette to play musette style? <laughs> Let me show you what it's like to play La Vie en Rose with just a few different reeds. This is just the uh, bassoon, the lowest reed. It shouldn't have a detuned musette. It's a dry tuning. Um, uh, That's a dry tuned organ kind of sound. This is the clarinet, again, just a single reed. Oh, that was a 
nice chord. With musette, you'll see someone described it there. It's two clarinet reeds, slightly detuned. Oh, I mean, it's beautiful. Um, one note sounds like two notes, right? If I put two notes together... Let's switch back. Musette helps. Musette helps. Uh, my analogy is, do I need a KitchenAid blender to make pizza dough? No, you can do it by hand. Will it be the same in the end? Kinda. It just saves a lot of work. Um, do you need a Ferrari race car to go around the track? No, you could do it in your Toyota Camry. Ferrari makes it a bit easier. It sounds a bit nicer. The musette, I could do this sound really easily. Can I do it with clarinet? Almost. But musette makes it a lot easier. It's the right tool for musette kind of music. Uh, if you can find a used accordion with a musette sound for 500 euros, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Ask around. Uh, no problem, Don. Hello, hello, Carmen. Uh, you live in Europe? Yeah, there might. Uh, ask around. Do I remember the Nacht in Gan Eden? I do. Nacht in Gan Eden. A night in the Garden of Eden. Um, do, 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 do. Let's, uh, I'm just going to Google A Nacht in Gan Eden because it's a beautiful klezmer song. A Nacht in Gan Eden. This is how I learn songs. Let's listen to it. Yeah. So this is what, um, if someone's at a party and they say, hey, Ronan, do you know this song? I'm like, yeah, I kind of know it. But once I hear it, do 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 we could play it. Let's play an Achtin Ganadin, let's play Besame Mucho and um and and we'll see we'll see what else to play. So one, two, three. The re didn't make a sound. One and again I'm using musette.
Besame Mucho to uh, Anacht in Gan Eden to back and forth between them. And uh, we finished off with uh, The Legend of Zelda, um, Breath of the Wild. Um, it's really nice. So Anacht in Gan Eden, there's that third part um, that I don't know very well. Um, but then we transposed it up from a D minor to an A minor just to make it interesting. Um, they're Hazer, Bulgar, and B-flat. I don't know that name. Dominic says, I've learned to play my accordion upside down or backwards, and now I find it difficult to learn the right way. Have you heard of such a thing? I, I Like, did you did you learn it this way? With, um, like, playing it like this? Um, <laughs> I, I would say, are you finding... Is it limiting your ability to play? Because... A number of musicians have learned their instruments upside down, right? Was it Jimi Hendrix that played a left-handed guitar right? Um, and he, he's pretty good. So it depends if it's hindering your playing. I would say stick with it if it's what you've learned. Just like, uh, but, but if you are finding that you're, you've hit a block and it's because of you learning it upside down, um, th th then make the switch, right? Start with the most basic exercises. Um, in my right, left, left hand basics, just put your hand on the C major, take your hand away. Find C major again, take your hand away. That's your exercise for today. Maybe for today and tomorrow, C major to G major. Looking, take your hand away. C major, G major, take your hand away. Maybe that's all you do to reacquaint yourself with a cor correct way, with a correct way of playing the accordion. You'll be ambidextrous if I stop being stubborn and just learn the right way. But until then, it's a big mental block. It's an interesting situation. Yeah. Um, let's, uh, I have just a few more minutes. Um, bassoon is the second octave. Sounds very good for French too. Yeah, it all sounds nice, right? And it all depends. If I'm playing solo, fine. If I'm playing with someone else, maybe all I'm doing is with bassoon just going... <laughs> I'm just doing that background or maybe if I'm playing I remember in my band we did uh, St. James Infirmary and I would just play in the upper registers just it was uh, tuba right a sousaphone boom ba boom ba boom ba boom and the violin was doing some padding so all I would do was wisps of like G minor like I went down St. James Infirmary I saw my baby there. She was right. That's that's doable too. So ver having more colors to paint with can be nice. But I think to go back to uh, SoCap, Musette is a nice thing to have. But sometimes it's nice when you're learning an instrument to just be confined to the three sounds: to single read, double read, and single read. Um, to bassoon, clarinet, and the master. Um, that that could be nice too. Um, good. Um, Polish songs like Bride Waltz, especially of a Yiddish style. Yeah, what's the Bride's Waltz? I have it. Sorry, I'm looking at. Let me let me just play a few more songs. Oh, the Yiddish Mazurka, the Bride's Waltz. Let's play a few more minutes. My five year old is getting a haircut today, so I'm gonna have to have a quite a hard stop because there might be some resistance. Let's play a little bit more. Um, a big zunt. Uh, how is the volume for an apartment? I'm a bit concerned for my neighbors. It's tough. Um, it depends on your neighbors. Uh, it's easy to play like this sometimes. Uh, it's not an, a, it's not a quiet instrument though. You can get a keyboard with headphones for practicing, but then for performing, tell your neighbors, Hey, every day, between two and three, I'm going to practice my accordion. So maybe when is a good time? I think communication with your neighbors might be the best choice. Say, listen, I have to practice my instrument. Is there a time when no one is sleeping, when it's okay for me to make a bit of noise? Um, yeah, my, my old apartment, I used to have the piano there. And uh, someone from two floors up complained. Bec anyway, so it was just... An issue and I had to speak to the concierge to say listen I'm a musician I need to practice I know there's noise complaints 
uh, and eventually she she I think we came up with an agreement I, I moved the piano to another wall so the sound wouldn't move um, so, so I, I, I sympathize with you to having neighbors it's, it's just the reality of, of, of living in uh, of living uh, we said Yiddish mazurka <laughs> I'm trying to switch songs. Thank you. 
uh, what did we do there? We did uh, <laughs> we did some songs. We did uh, uh, the Yiddish Mazurka, the Bride's Waltz. To we were in E minor to Dona Dona, just because someone asked for Dona Dona. And then we went back to Harvest Moon by Neil Young, which we started the live stream with. Um, someone asked David Bros, I'm trying to learn the Valstamini and I'm having problems with my hand coordination on that song. Do you have any tips on how to play it slowly? Yeah. One of my top questions that I always get asked is, I'm trying to play the Valstamini. It's usually my one of the first songs. I also I learned the accordion with Valstamini, but I'm stumbling. My, my quick answer is, are you able to play another song that's not a waltz? Uh, someone asked a question to start off the live stream. Uh, should I play Vals de Monstre as one of my first songs? And my answer is no. Try and play a children's song like Ode to Joy, Mary Had a Little Lamb, um, before you play a waltz. So the issue with Vals de Amelie is you're trying to fit in more notes with the right hand than the left hand. And I'll show you. I wrote a guide on uh, hand coordination. Uh, it's called the How To Guide to Coordinating Your Hands on the Accordion. Um, will it work? Yes, it will. And I, I, hand independence is 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 difficult, right? It's like trying to do this: tap your head and rub your belly at the same time. That's the Vals family. So I have a series of exercises, hand independence exercises, um, sort of guiding you step by step. So for Vals family. Again, my, my first suggestion is don't play it yet. Have some other songs that are more like. And then if you want to learn Vals Amelie, go through that blog post, the hand, the guide to hand independence. What I want to see you do is be able to say the D minor to A minor. Those are the two chords in Amelie. I want you to be able to speak over them. I want you to be able to use your right hand fingers and hands away from the keyboard and do that. And then start doing different rhythms like that while maintaining the left hand, right? So eventually you'll get to... But before that, we're just going to play this. Right? So we're breaking down the song to its basic elements, likely where you're stumbling, and we're identifying where you're stumbling, where you're having trouble. And again, not just you, we're, we all have issues with hand separation. In the blog post, I discuss my own issues with, with La Noyer and other songs. And through those series, I think there are five exercises that show you how to start separating your hands, and eventually it clicks. Eventually, after three weeks, after three days, after three minutes, it'll click and you'll be able to start slowly building La Valse d'Amelie and other songs. But again, take a few steps back. Almost no one picks up the accordion and does... Um, eventually, the hands want to do the same thing, and it does require a bit of work to, to tear those hands apart. What it means is working on your left hand a bit while talking and doing other things with your hand. And then the same thing with your right hand, the left hand. Doing this and being able to talk and being able to look at your left hand and it and essentially separating your right and left hands. It's a big issue. It's a big topic. Don't worry. It's the most frequently asked question about learning the accordion. Oh, you can play other songs. I can play Katyusha and some other Czech songs. But the two to one gets me, for sure. That's the main issue. So Katyusha. I'm in. Yeah, it has some stumbling, but the waltz is usually the hard thing. Follow those exercises. If you can play some other songs, look at that how-to guide and it, it might help you. Otherwise, send me an email and I could, I'm happy to help you too. Um... Good. What was the tutorial page? Could you link it, please? Uh, the, the site I'm sharing is... Oh, this one. Let me share that. And just my site is accordionlove.com. This is my little pitch. Uh, all of the... 95% of the songs that I played today are on accordionlove.com. I go through the lesson explaining how the left hand works, how the right hand works, as well as the sheet music. Um, and 
theory and practice and exercises about how do we build chords? How do we build voicing? Someone asked when I recorded the right hand basics, I re-recorded them probably about six months ago, um, explaining how to build majors and minors, chords and triads and voicings. Uh, the site's always being added to every week uh, and the site's being relaunched. Uh, I just got all the children's songs transcribed and those will go live um, probably before the site launches. Uh, anyways, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll type my email. Thank you for coming out, everyone. It's so nice to see new faces and always nice to see familiar faces. Uh, let me write my email. Ronan at accordionlove.com. Um, yeah, I, I hope you're well. Uh, thank you for those of you that write to me, just keeping me updated about how you're doing in life and obviously how you're doing with the accordion. I'm always happy to hear that. Um, yeah, thanks again for coming out. Bye-bye.